Animation undoubtedly creates great looking apps. Unless done correctly though, it can also create great pile of mess in your code base. Having covered the core principles of animation in the previous part, we can move towards a much cleaner UI code and also its reusability by utilizing animated widget and animated builder. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development by building better, faster, more stable apps. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to grow your Flutter coding skills. While it's true that animation is simply done by rebuilding the UI multiple times per second, doing this simply naively by calling set state is not the best option, because at the very least, this set state calling creates unnecessary boilerplate, but what's even worse, it really tightly ties the animation together with the UI widget which is being animated, which prevents code reuse. And also make sure you understand the basics of animation in Flutter from the tutorial to which you can get by clicking on the card in the corner before moving on. And also be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video and overall just learn at your own pace. So let's first start off with an animated widget. It is perfect when you do not care about the widget being tied to an animation but you want to keep your code clean. So still, as we've done in the previous part of this uh, little series, the animation will still be kind of tied to the actual UI widget. So the transform rotate will take its value from the animation dot value directly like it's done now, but this UI will no longer be built directly in the animation page, but it will be inside its own separate widget. And also we will not have to call this empty set state, which looks kind of weird. So let's move on to animated widget. I'm actually going to copy all of this code and create a new file here, which will be called animated widget page. So what we are going to do is that we're just simply going to create a new state less widget kind of and call it Reso Coder image because that's what we are animating after all in this series. Instead of a stateless widget though, it's going to extend an animated widget, which is actually a state full widget, not stateless. If we take a look at its definition by hitting F12, right? But that doesn't matter to us. What matters is that this resocoder images uh, built method will return the UI, which is currently the body of the animation page. So it's going to clear up the code a bit. So let's cut out this transform and instead let's place here the resocoder image. Of course, this is not all that we have to do because we currently do not have any animation value which we can use to rotate the transform. So what we have to do is realize that animated widget actually has to take in in its constructor a listenable, as we can see here. And of course, listenable is also an animation because animation implements or extends listenable. So what we are going to do is that we're going to create a constructor for Reso Coder image, which will take in a required name parameter. Let's call it animation and it will be of type animation double. So animation and let's pass it into the super constructor of the animated widget. And of course we have to give it a name of listenable. With that, we're good to go with this constructor. And now we can get this listenable from the super class directly in the build method. You could also create your own field and store it inside the Reso Coder image class, but we are going to use the super classes field. So let's get out final animation. And let's get it out from uh, the supers listenable. And let's cast it as an animation double. So really, there's nothing special that's happening here. 
we just move the animation over to a new separate widget. So now we can just pass the animation from our main stateful widget, which contains the animation controller and animation and all of that, we can pass it over to this resocoder image. So let's specify the animation and we're going to set it to be animation because that's how it's named even in this widget. And with that, if we now launch it in the emulator, it's going to look precisely the same as the basic animation page where we are just calling set state. And of course, uh, we can even remove this set state call. I almost forgotten about that because the set state is now no longer going to be called by our animation page state, but set state will be implicitly called by this animated widget. So we are no longer rebuilding the UI of our whole page, only the UI of the animated widget will be rebuilt. Because of course, behind the scenes, animated widget also calls set state, but we just do not have to deal with that. So after that's done, and after I go to main.dart and switch over to animated widget page, and let's see it in the emulator for real, it surely looks the same as the basic animation page where we were calling set state previously. So this approach is very useful when you just want to separate only the UI, which is being animated, for example, because you want to animate the resubcoder image or whatever else you want to animate throughout your whole app. While this animated widget approach allows you to reuse the UI, which is tied together with its motion only, there is also an animated builder. And this is usually used to separate even the motion into its own widget. Yes, that's right. A motion can also be separated. So for example, in this case, the motion is this transform that rotate because this is what is actually being animated visually. And then the rest of the UI. So this container and all that this container contains is not really moved in any way. It's just uh, a child of the transform. The transform is the thing which is being animated in our case and separating the motion into its own widget is usually called a transition widget. Also animated builder comes with performance optimizations so that the UI is not going to be rebuilt every time the animation value changes. So animated builder is perfect to use with large animated widget subtrees. We do not have a large widget subtree, but if you do, using an animated builder will be surely beneficial even more than just using animated widget or the set state approach. And actually you should never use the set state, the basic naive approach in your apps. Just use animated widget because it will make your code cleaner and that's what you should be always after. So let's now create a rotating transition, which will be a widget doing nothing more than applying an animation on a transform. It's going to be a stateless widget. Let's create it above the reso coder image. So stateless rotating transition. And let's make it return an animated builder. And this animated builder takes in an animation builder and a child. So actually, before we can do anything here, we're going to take in these uh, parameters which are required for the animated builder, and we're going to store them inside class fields. So let's create final widget child. This child will be, of course, now the container holding the image. And then final animation double. And let's give it some more fitting name than just animation, because we are animating an angle of a transform. Let's give it a name angle. And then we are going to populate these two fields in the rotating transitions constructor. So let's give it a constructor with two required named parameters. So the first one will be this dot angle and then add required this 
that child. And now what are we going to do in the animated builder? Well, we will specify the animation first and it's going to be the angle. And then let's specify the child. So child will be child. This child will be actually pre-built by the animated builder for performance optimizations. So it will not be rebuilt on every new animation value or in other words, animation tick. And this child will be this container and whatever is contained in the container. So it's not going to have this transform that rotate because this transform actually has to be rebuilt on every new animation tick. So what we are going to do is that we will utilize the builder here, which takes in a build context. So let's just call it context and then the child. So this child is nothing else than this child, which is specified above and it's already pre-built. So that's why it's even passed into this builder so that we can use the pre-built version of this child. And we are going to return a transform dot rotate and we are going to rotate angle from the angle dot value and remember that this angle which is the class field is of type animation double so we are just getting a number here and assigning it to the angle of the transform and of course because we return the transform from the builder this widget this transform will be rebuilt every single time that the value of the animation changes but as I've already said multiple times, the child will not be rebuilt. So that's pretty awesome. We are going to really optimize the performance of this app. And now that we've separated this animation motion into a separate widget rotating transition, we can now reuse this rotating transition with any widget we like. And it's going to be all very performant because of the performance optimizations with anim which Animated Builder provides. But what's going to happen with the Reso Coder image widget? Well, we do not even have to have it as a separate widget anymore, but let's leave it at that. Of course, it's not going to extend Animated Widget anymore. It's just going to be a stateless widget. Let's remove its constructor and also not get the animation here from the listenable because it's no longer present. And now we are going to remove the transform that rotate from here because we are no longer going to perform the rotation directly in here. We instead have a separate uh, class for that, for the rotation. And with that, we have Reso Coder image, which is again, just a regular dumb widget, so to say, a state less widget. And now if we scroll up to the animation page state, we're going to return from the build function a transition here, so the rotating transition. And we're going to specify its child, which will be the Reso Coder image. Of course, we also have to specify the angle, which is a required parameter. And this angle will come from the animation because uh, we are we are storing an animation field in this animation page state class. This was all done in the previous part, if you've not noticed by now. And with this, we should go to main.dart and uh, change it to animated builder page. But I've just noticed that I was writing everything inside the same uh, file in which I was writing the animated widget example. So I'm going to like fix it later on so that you can get the project from GitHub and have all of these three options nicely beside each other. So if you are wondering from where you can get the GitHub project, everything is available from the written tutorial to which you can get from the link in the video description. But even with this minor mistake on my part, if uh, we save this UI and go over to the emulator and see it, it's gonna look just as it should even with the animated builder. And what we've accomplished now is that we have separated the motion, the transition as it's called in Flutter by convention, and the actual UI being animated. And it turns out that Flutter has its own transitions, which you can use. For example, there is a fade transition, size transition, and even 
a rotation transition. But what's the difference between, for example, the rotation transition, which is already pre-built, and our own rotating transition? Well, if we change this to rotation transition, it will no longer take in the angle, but instead it takes in full turns. So if we wanted to animate it like this without changing anything, it would not really work all that great because it's gonna spin like completely uh, crazy widget. Why is that? Well, it no longer takes in angle, but turns. So we will no longer animate this tween to go between zero and two times pi, which is full circle, but instead just zero and one. So we can actually just scratch this tween altogether because animation goes by default between zero and one. But even if we leave this tween in here and uh, restart the app by hitting control shift F5, now it's gonna be animated as it should be even with the pre-built rotation widget but if we change this tween to go two it's gonna perform two full circles so yeah it's gonna be even faster but still will not be as crazy as before when it performed actually six circles i think and if we change this back to zero to one and use the other transitions which are pre-built for example fade transition it no longer takes in turns obviously but instead an opacity and with that if we take a look at it and restart the app we cannot see it and now we can see it oh and it's performing a bounce animation on the opacity which surely looks interesting this bouncing of opacity and there are many more animations like for example i don't know size transition Let's check it out as the last one. It's, it takes in a, a size factor. So just let's see how it will look like once we check it out in the UI. Well, it uh, definitely, we would have to do some, some more setup with this size transition because it looks kind of funny. But anyway, we can use this approach even with the pre-built Flutter transitions and we can build our own custom transitions. So really, with this approach, you can do anything you want in Flutter with animation using the first party animation, because of course, there are some other options which you can use to animate your widgets, but those are third party packages. And actually, we're going to take a look at them next. So if you don't wanna miss those next tutorials on animation and also more other tutorials on Flutter and Dart, definitely subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your Flutter coding skills. Because here on Reso Coder, I am determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there. If this video helped you to understand the animated widget and also animated builder, give it a like and also share it with other developers who will surely benefit from it. Follow me on Instagram, I go under the name ResoCoder everywhere. Leave a comment if you have anything to say and see you in the next video.